morning everyone. Today I'm working on a hot case uh, that's not shutting off. So this thing's been off all night. You can see surface temperatures 180 degrees. Uh, so let's pull this bad boy apart and see what's going on. Uh, we'll start by pulling off this board here. There was one element in the case. So let's pull this board out. Um, unfortunately there's no schematic here and let's just identify all the components and we're just gonna make our own schematic. Okay, so we can see here we have our power in coming into the power switch. Um, and then it's feeding a board. We have a relay for the element. And then we have our temperature probe here, the red, white, and black. But as you can see here, the unit is off. Uh, we're getting 14 amps running off this element here. So we definitely have an issue. So let's go ahead and draw a schematic up for this. All right, so let's go get a schematic made up here so that we can troubleshoot this thing easily. So we got our L1 in neutral. Um, next, we're gonna draw our switch. So our switch that you saw there, the power switch has two contact points. Um, if you saw there, we had that green board as well. So let's get the board in here. All right, next we're gonna add our relay. So let's put the contact first. Next is the coil and there is our element and we're gonna connect our wiring now. So let's wire this up. So L1 in neutral, straight shot to the power switch. On the outlet of the power switch, we're feeding the board. And then next we're gonna bring in power to our um, relay contact. So that's coming directly off the switch. Our contact feeds that element and then our neutral side on the incoming side of the switch is a straight shot to our element. And then we're gonna feed our relay coil, which is coming off our board. And what's controlling that is the temperature probe. And let's just get everything labeled up here. So our element, our relay coil. Let's just go over our sequence of operations here. So we have power into our switch. Okay, and then once our switch closes here, we're gonna power up our board. So we're going to close both sides of the switch. The board's going to get power. Okay, now the board has a temperature probe. When there's a call for heat, we're going to send power to our relay coil here. And when our relay coil gets power, it's going to close this contact right here. Okay, so this is fed from the incoming side of the switch. We get power on our contact or on our relay coil, and then we have power on the element. And then our neutral side is a straight shot from the incoming power on the power switch. So the inlet side, not the outlet side. And there is a completed circuit. That is our sequence of operations. So uh, let's get our meter out and let's troubleshoot and see what's going on. Come off our incoming neutral, and we're going to check power into our relay contact. We are getting 115 volts there. All right, so with our switch off, we're coming through here. We have 115 volts right here. This side is gonna be completed circuit because um, it's on the uh, incoming side of the switch. So the element will always have the neutral hooked up. So let's go test this relay and see if it's um, stuck closed. All right, so you can see here, we have 115 volts at the outlet of the relay. And then we're going to test the cross for potential difference just to confirm. And you can see there we're basically getting, let's get our meter in there. And you can see there we're getting zero volts. So that's telling us the switch is closed. All right, so we tested power in to neutral, 115. And then we tested power out to neutral one more time and we got 115. So what's that telling us? This relay is stuck closed. Okay, so the next okay. thing we want to test is let's just make sure there's no power on this coil. So if we're getting power to this coil, uh, most likely this board is bad. Um, so let's go test that coil really quickly. So let's check this coil here. And we're set to DC voltage. We have zero volts there. So what I'm going to do next now is turn on the unit and you can see we have 27 volts DC. So that's telling me the board is good. Go ahead here, I put a new board in. As you can see, we're getting zero amps with the switch off. 
which is what it should be doing. We're going to fire up the switch here. And let's just make sure that we do get amperage. And we do. We have 14 amps. So that's good. Now the last thing we want to make sure is that the unit's going to shut off. So what we're going to do here is we're going to lower the set point um, to below the current temperature. And then the relay should open and then we should lose our amp draw. And as you can see here, we lost our amp draw. So the relay is now opening as it should be. And the last thing we're going to check here is just do a quick uh, temperature check. So we got set point 195. This probe is not super accurate. I just want to make sure we're not going over 200 degrees. So we're good there, 160, 170. All right, so now the last thing I want to do is uh, I just want to go over why that happened. So this is how the unit should have been wired. So our neutral should have came in and it should have been connected on the outlet of this power switch. Okay, it was connected on the incoming of the power switch and then I would have done the same thing on the L1 side. I would have brought this wire up and moved it over here. All right, so with it wired that way, let's go see. So if this thing is stuck closed, how it was, so instead of being open, this is closed. Okay, with the power switch off, okay, this is going to be open here. Same thing with our neutral side, it'll be open here. Even though this switch right here is stuck closed, we're not going to get power to this circuit on both sides. So that's kind of how I would have wired the units, what they probably should have done. Um, I'm not sure why it was wired on the other side of the switch. Um, but more importantly, the whole point of this exercise is, I mean, if you want to get better at your schematic skills, start drawing them, okay? And then when you get really good, start questioning, why did the manufacturer wire it this way? Or why did it wire that way? I love when we do like training and classes um, at the shop and guys will say, I'll ask, how would you have wired this? And then when guys are like, well, you should have wired it this way instead of that way. That's when I know they fully understand how a schematic should be wired. It's almost like you have to think like the engineer to understand this to the fullest, but it'll really take your troubleshooting to another level.